Hey everyone, today we're going to go through the process of compositing CGI with photography. So here we have some 3D models uh, of just a simple shader ball with varying materials and that composited over uh, a real shot backplate. Uh, so we're going to be using key concepts like uh, camera matching, uh, rendering with image-based lighting and HDRs, and basic compositing techniques. Uh, in this case, we're going to be using Photoshop. And the render engine that we're going to be using is V-Ray. All right. Uh, all that I have right now is just a simple shader ball. Uh, I got this from Grant Orwick's site from Mastering CGI. Um, the site's currently down. But you, know, you can do this with any shader ball or really just a sphere and cylinder just to get through the process. All right. Uh, so the first pro thing that we need to do here is begin by creating a new camera, right? So with this new camera, uh, we need to, I'll turn on the resolution gate here. We want to make sure that we're camera matching, right? So in order to do that, we need to take the camera settings from the real life camera and apply it to the, the physical camera here. Uh, when I say physical camera, I mean the V-Ray physical camera. So I'm just going to select render cam, go to the attribute editor here, V-Ray physical camera. All right, I'm going to scroll down, go to extra attributes, and then uh, you can see that it's enabled and we're going to uh, punch in some, some settings here. Uh, I'm going to just specify FOV. Uh, I'm going to turn that off and we'll just use the, you know, the 35 film gate here uh, and if I go to the images here, right, and you may be wondering where I got these images from, uh, I got them from HRI Haven. So if you go to HRI Haven, this guy, he does fantastic work. Um, all of these HDRIs are high quality, they're free, and many of them come with backplates, right? So we're going to be camera matching to these backplates that you see here. Uh, I'm specifically using this one located here, and when you download them, you can use, you know, uh, I download all of them, right? Because I use the retouched pretty J uh, JPEG, but I use the raw for to gather all the camera settings, all right? And then, so under source images, you can see that um, we have the bus depot. I go to properties. Uh, you can just right click do properties um, through windows here. And you can see f-stop 1.5, exposure time one second, um, focal length 20. So we're going to be type putting in these settings and it's going to get us close. Uh, you know, the other thing that you can use is uh, Adobe Bridge. So you can see that I have the raw NEF file here and it tells you roughly the same amount of information. Uh, and these will get us again really close. I wish um, my did have a camera matching tool uh, like 3ds Max does, or there's an open source tool called FSpy that used to be called Blam from Blender. Um, but there's no easy way to bring that camera match data uh, into here unless you write a script, uh, which I currently don't have. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and type in some of that information. With the focal length uh, for this camera, uh, I'm going to you know, start with a focal length of 30, which is based off the information that we got from the here. Right, again, properties details okay now it says focal length 20 uh, I am going to use 30 with a 35 millimeter gate I ran through these settings this was what I got with the best result okay the F number I am going to set it to uh, 9 here okay and then again if we take a look uh, at the property settings um, 9.5 for the F number and then shutter speed is 250. It was 252. That should be fine. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, shutter speed is 1. And then ISO is 250. Now what will end up happening, right? So we need to go ahead now and create uh, a dome light, right? Because we're using those physical cameras which is with this dome light and loading in this HDRI. This is the image-based lighting, right? So I'm going to use dome text. Under dome text, I'm going to load the file. And I want to make sure that I use this HDR. Make sure not to use backplates or anything like that, uh, or JPEGs. You want to make sure to use 
the high dynamic range image, which is going to give us the most realistic uh, lighting. It gives us the best results and it holds the most lighting information uh, in these files. So it's just going to take it a second to load here. Uh, good. So went ahead and uh, loaded in fine. And then you can see I have just kind of basic materials on this uh, shader ball here. All right. Now, what I am going to do is go into textured mode here, uh, or you can go between five and six, uh, five being shaded, six being textured. And now we can actually see uh, the dome light uh, texture and everything that we have uh, set up. All right. Now, if I go ahead and render with the settings from the camera, you can see that things are immediately uh, not looking all that great. Uh, it's overexposed. That's why I was, I was saying things are going to get pretty close. So what I what I ended up doing is just for the shutter speed, setting it to something, uh, you know, a little bit faster. Because remember, this is inverse. So right, shutter speed one over one. Uh, one second long shutter speed is fairly long, so you're letting a ton of light in here. Now it's one over eight, uh, so it's going to kind of bring that down uh, quite a bit, make it faster, uh, and everything else will work as needed as intended. So we're, we're, right now we're at a good base. Feel free to play to the play with these core settings uh, as you see fit, or to get something that uh, is to more your liking. All right. So now that we have that all kind of set up with the camera properties, now comes the important part of actually camera matching this. Okay, so I'm going to turn off uh, this here and I'm going to go to view image plane, import image. Now I have to camera match this back plate. All right, this is what we're going to be using. Now I'm bringing this in mainly as a reference all right so you can see that it's, it comes it, it came in uh, we have to make a few adjustments uh, right off the bat so under resolution we want to set the resolution so I'm going to disable maintain width and height and I want to go to the image here and we can see under general or sorry details uh, it's 44928 by 3264 I'm going to just type that in initially don't worry we're not going to be rendering 5k images or anything so uh, 4928 by 3264. Then I'm going to go ahead and hit maintain width F aspect ratio and set this something to a lot more reasonable, like a thousand. So that way it will keep uh, the, you know, sorry, 1000. Uh, it will keep the aspect ratio of the original image, right? So now if I go back and type in 4928, you can see that uh, it's going to be, try to be pretty close uh, to this, all right? So this will be good enough. Uh, so I will set this back to a thousand six sixty. And now that we have that, we can see that our image plane here is looking good. And what I'm going to do is select this image plane, right? But now we can't see our sphere. That's because we need to adjust adjust the depth. I'm just going to push this image way back. I'm going to set it to like ten thousand uh, here. So now you can see. We have the sphere, but you know you can maybe get pretty close, um, but you need a better frame of reference, right? So what I'm going to do now is actually create a plane, all right? So we're going to create this plane, and we're going to use this to help perspective match uh, with our background, all right? So I'm going to set this to two by two, and I'm just going to really scale this plane up. So you can see this is the plane that we're going to use to perspective match. Uh, our background now the nice thing is this warehouse right it's architecture you have typically four walls and a roof so I'm going to use this here and just really start scaling it up and trying to get as close as I can okay so we're just doing this by eye I'm just doing this by eye uh, the other thing that I typically like to do is create a cube right and with this cube I'm going to do 183 centimeters and I'm going to do 50 by 50. And this is going to give us a six foot tall uh, cube. So, you know, you can create six foot, five foot, 10 foot, just as long as you have a frame of reference, right? This I'd say is the size of, you know, a typical person. Um, so we can make sure that this will integrate in, into this uh, into this scene properly, right? So now I'm, 
once I kind of get pretty close, right, I start doing this back and forth process where I will go ahead now and create this, the corner for the wall, because we can see the corner of the building right here, okay? And now that I have this, if I go ahead and hold shift, right? So uh, all I did was, right, if, if you're new to Maya, just hold right click, go to edge mode, grab these edges, right? So I'm just selecting these edges here and hold shift and move up, okay? So now you can see that I'm essentially just creating walls, all right? And then I'll go into x-ray mode right up here, okay? So now I have this wall kind of running down. I have the floor and the back wall. And you can see that the corner of this building is still off. It's not really lined up. Um, so I'm going to kind of move this back till it matches this corner here. And you can see now we have this angle running along the window. So these are the things that I'm trying to look for as I'm, you know, trying to perspective match. Uh, and it's just going to, there we go, getting pretty, pretty close, um, at least with that corner. And this, is, again, like, it's just this back and forth process of trying to get this to match as close as we can. Um, so, you know, you, you want to do this. Right, and. Okay, and I'm just gonna kind of push this wall back a little bit further and push this wall, right? So I'm just kind of pushing it back so, so it gets, so it matches a, uh, a little bit more accurately. All right, and I'd say this is right now pretty close. You wanna get it, um, you know, as close as you can. Uh, right now, I don't wanna just keep going back and forth um, with this. You, but you get the idea, right? You can see I'm I'm already fairly close enough, I'd say. Um, and I'm just, again, a combination of maneuvering this, positioning it, uh, and getting something pretty close. And probably this last bit here, I want to stay pretty close to that corner. Okay. And you can see it's just a little bit, it's just, it can be fairly finicky. All right, so we're gonna stay with this and then I'm gonna go ahead and just delete the walls because all we really need is are these uh, ground planes, right? And so now that I have this cube, you can kind of see, right? And now that I have this, I'm gonna lock my camera. Uh, what I also like to do just in case is uh, go to bookmarks, edit bookmarks and do new and close that, right? And then now if I accidentally move my camera and mess that up and I didn't lock it, well, you can just go back to bookmark and it'll reset that, right? So now what I can do is position this, <coughs> excuse me, I can position this sphere to the camera here. And, you know, I can do it from this point of view as well. And what I also like to do now is make sure that my HDR is also matching. Okay, so what I am going to do is I have just this uh, chrome material. So I'm going to use that as the, the main basis for matching my uh, HDR. So I went ahead and applied that. And if I go ahead and do just a, a quick render here. You can see that it looks uh, like it's starting to integrate now. Keep in mind that V-Ray, uh, or Maya right now, is using this image plane here, right? So if I'm pretty happy with how this matched up, I can delete this. I have to delete this image plane, right? Uh, you can do it a couple different ways. You can just simply select it right in the viewport and hit delete. Uh, if you want to do it from the outliner, you have to go to display, enable sh shapes, and then under, it's right here under image plane. And you can delete it and you can always re-add it uh, and it'll just pop right back in there all right so then now that image plane is gone you can see this is the actual hdr right now here's the thing uh right because this is the original backplate and this is the hdri 
we're already pretty close, honestly, with this. But a lot of times, right, if I'm using this and I'm using a completely different one, like let's say there's um, this part of the warehouse uh, or the bus depot that I want to use, right, and that's I'm looking at that. Well, you would go to the dome light. I'm going to jump to attribute editor and go to V-Ray place environment texture and then rotate this. And now you can see I can just adjust that however I see fit uh, to match whatever angle was in the original uh, back plate, right? But in this instance, right, right, I can do something like that. But in this instance, honestly, he shot it from the same angle, uh, so it just happened to work out with zero rotation. So, because we want to make sure that the reflections, right, our lighting matches exactly that. If you don't do that, if you don't do that, then everything else is going to fall apart. You're going to start noticing things in the reflections that shouldn't be there. The lighting is going to be incorrect. Um, all that good stuff. Okay. So, now that we have that, so I have my camera matched. I'm using my HDRs pr uh, properly adjusted. And we're going to go ahead now and set our V-Ray dome light also to uh, invisible, right? If I go to the attribute editor, V-Ray light dome shape, go to options, I'm gonna set that to invisible, okay? Uh, so we're still gonna pick up the lighting and reflections from here, but now we can actually start um, compositing into the back plate. Now what I am gonna do here is duplicate, move this, I just want to create a couple of different shader balls with different materials like you saw in the final render. Uh, all, all I'm going to do is just duplicate and move the uh, original one. And I already have some materials set up. I'm going to just space these out a little bit more. Maybe even bring this one up a little bit. Okay. And the good thing is we can move these now that this is camera matched, right? Because we're essentially just moving this along the floor here. And so we're, we're good there. And then what I'm going to do is apply some m different materials. So this can stay chrome. I'm going to make this, uh, if I open up my hypershade, uh, this plastic material. Right? And then this one's just going to be a gray ball. Yeah. Yeah matte main gray great so I can go ahead now and just so you can see my render settings I'm simply using progressive right now for testing uh, and then no GI uh, I am going to turn on GI right now and then set irradiance map um, set to pretty low settings like cash subdivs down to 500 just so we can test okay and great so now we can go ahead and do uh, a nice new render. And then I can hide my frame, scale frame, right? Because again, this is six foot tall. So I'll hide that little guy. But the all in all, everything's starting to come together. So what we need to do now is, right, because we want to get this lighting information, right? We also want to capture it from the ground, but we don't want this ground plane, right? Because now we're losing the this floor here but we want the shadow lighting occlusion all that good stuff so in order to do that we need to use a uh, what's called a v-ray material wrapper all right this is essentially a matte uh, a matte will create a matte surface right which will replace the base material in the wrapper with the scenes background well, what do i mean by that if I go here and again try to find uh, the wrapper material, V-Ray material wrapper. Okay, uh, I have the V-Ray material wrapper. For the base material, I'm just going to simply just give it a regular, ba you know, clay V-Ray material, right? So we can call this uh, uh, wrapper base. Okay, and then this one, right, if I uh, delete by type history, and then the V-Ray material wrapper, uh, I'll just call it wrapper main, okay? 
And then now, right, here are the properties, right, the matte properties. So with this V-Ray Material Wrapper, I enable matte surface, enable shadows, and affect alpha. Now what that's going to do, it's going to capture the shadows and lighting and information, but only the lighting and shadow information and ignore the actual geo. Now you also have to set alpha contribution to negative one, right? By setting it to negative one, it's going to use the transparency uh, of the base material and cut out uh, from any alpha that the objects are behind. So again, what I mean by all that, if I go ahead and do a nice render, you'll kind of start to see what happens, right? Now it looks like, right, all we've done is essentially hide the ground plane. But in fact, if I jump to alpha here, take a look at that. There's all that lighting information that's being applied into this rendered image. So if I go ahead and stop that, and now in the V-Ray frame buffer, I go to show corrections, controls, enable background image, and then load the image, right? I want to go to source images or wherever you have it and load that retouch. And then now, there you go, right? The background image is there. Right? You can see the alpha. It's taken that lighting information because previously it was it was doing that where we had the ground plane. Now it's still using the ground plane, but allowing us to capture that lighting information. So it looks like these uh, ground these objects are in this scene now. Just for a quick demonstration, if I hide the ground plane, take a look at how it looks like now, right? With progressive, you can see the difference. So I'm gonna bring that back, right? So select Shift H, okay? Look at the difference between these two, right? Great. So now you can see the lighting and then information coming. Previously, it just looked like it was just floating there. All right, so, so far so good. But what we do notice now here is that the ground plane in the in our scene is showing up in the reflections when instead it should be this environment. So we have to do an, an extra step. Um, sometimes you may be fine and not not notice it, but in this case we have a chrome ball here. Uh, with it's a, it's not a perfect mirror ball. It's 0.9 glossiness, but it still gives us we can still kind of see that, right? So. What I'm going to do now is go back to the material and the V-Ray wrapper material, the main portion of it, and then I'm going to do matte for all secondary rays. I'm going to set that with projection mapping. Okay, what that's going to do, if I change that, you'll see that it's going to kind of turn black, right? And because it's expecting to see a texture to use for projection mapping because it needs to take this texture. Well, it's looking for that here in the render settings. Okay, so I go to settings, sorry, override, under render settings, environment, and then override environment. Now, we need to do override secondary matte environment. And under secondary matte texture, that's where we're gonna plug in our uh, HDR. Now, in order to get the best results, what I had to do was use the uh, my original HDR because ide ideally you should just use the backplate, but it didn't work well. I got noticeable seams and whatnot. So by using the HDRI and setting that under V-Ray Place Environment to screen, we can take a look now to see what happens, right? So this is going to replace it and use projection mapping from that texture. And there you go. You start to get a much better result. Um, now, if you don't set that correctly, if you like, you leave it on spherical, it's going to look like this, right? And that's what I was the problem I was having with backplate, uh, with the backplate and screen. Um, so for right now, I'm just going to use a screen with the HDRI not the backplate. Okay, so that's all coming together pretty well. And once we have all of that set up, we can start looking into uh, 
you know, adding um, some ambient occlusion. Right. I'm just going to do another test render so we can see how this is coming together. And it's looking pretty good. Okay. So um, that's it for this video. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to go through the process of finishing up ambient occlusion and then also finishing up uh, going through the rest of the process of compositing uh, the images. So hopefully I'll see you guys there.